Good morning, everybody. Um, I make it 11 o'clock, so I'll get started. Um, so for today's webinar, I'm going to be going through how to conduct um, effective interviews um, with the purpose of today's session to give you a better understanding of the types of questions to ask when interviewing, as well as getting um, a feel for the candidate. Uh, despite the fact most hiring managers um, have a basic understanding of the purpose um, of a job interview. It's not uncommon um, for key questions to be missed during the interview process. Um, and unless you can walk away from a job interviewing, knowing whether you want to hire that applicant, um, it's probably a case that you haven't asked enough questions or even in some instances, um, you may, may not be asking um, the right questions. So this is a picture of just some of the Clover HR team and a bit, I guess, on our background. Between us, we have um, over 200 years experience in HR and we have specialists within our team in areas such as recruitment, training, and also wellbeing, just to name a few. So my name is Leanne Porter um, and I am a HR business partner for Clover HR. Um, hopefully um, I have muted um, your microphones. Um, this is just to help keep the background noise to a minimum for those of you that are on the webinar this morning, but also for um, our recording. Um, if you do have any questions, if I could just ask you to hold on to these until the end, I'll share with you again my contact details um, and then you'll be able to forward any questions you do have on to me. Um, so just having a look at what we're going to be covering today. So first of all, we'll go through the purpose of the interview process. We'll look at some pitfalls and um, types of discrimination to avoid during the interview process. Uh, we'll just cover off a bit about the interview process as well. And then also I'll share with you um, different types of questions you can ask during the interview and also provide you with some examples to give you some food for thought. Um, so, first of all, what is the purpose of the interview? Essentially, um, the purpose of a job interview is to determine if an applicant is qualified for the position um, which they're applying for, but also if the individual will be a good fit for um, both the company and the team they're going to be going into. Um, as a result, um, the hiring manager um, the result should be uh, the hiring, manager, hiring an employee who is going to be successful contributing member of the team. Um, also as part of the interview, um, you should uncover what motivates the employee. So that will be different for different people. It might be career development, might just be doing a good job, so having some stability, or it might even be flexibility. Also, it's good to ask um, what is motivating the employee to move or find a new role. Um, by assessing an individual's motivation can help you to assess both their fit for the role, um, the company, and also um, the future within the company and or role. Um, the interview process should be used um, also to narrow your search and by conducting a thorough job interview, um, first time round, uh, you should be better able to narrow your search and find um, the ideal candidate for the role. And essentially, this saves time, money and any, any unnecessary frustration um, by helping you get new positions filled more quickly. So just wanted to share some statistics with you that I've taken from Twin Employment and Training. So 47% of interviewers said that they wouldn't offer um, a job to candidates if they had little uh, knowledge of the company. Um, an interview um, generally lasts no longer than an hour, but results from a survey um, found that 33% knew whether they would hire someone within the fir first 90 seconds. So I think it goes without saying that first impressions are very important. Um, however, we do need to be mindful of um, our unconscious bias, and this is something which I'll get on to uh, later on in today's session. So 40% of interviewers thought that a lack of smile is a good enough reason not to consider a candidate. 
and eye contact is cru crucial for portraying confidence and around 65% of interviewers said that candidates who failed to make eye contact didn't get the role that they were applying for. So just moving on to look at some pitfalls. Um, so failing to prepare for the interview. So even with the best intentions, I've seen it on numerous occasions where the hiring managers um, don't take enough time to prepare for the interview. Um, instead, they pull out um, the CV or um, application form right before the candidate arrives or even as they see them pulling onto the drive. Um, and then proceeds to ask questions um, based on the, their application that look interesting. And then it's often a bit further down the line when they realise uh, they've missed an opportunity to ask um, other important questions. So asking the wrong question. This is where a company has a number of set questions for an interview and the candidate faces the same questions regardless of the role. Every interview should be tailored to the position and a series of questions um, that relate specifically to that position should be drawn up in advance. I appreciate that tailoring um, interviews in advance uh, requires additional work, um, but it really will help you uh, reap any benefits um, the time you take to do it up front. So comparing uh, candidates to uh, one another rather than going back to the hiring criteria, um, thoughts like, well, I guess um, this is the best we're going to do, or there's not a lot of talent out there, are signs that um, errors may be in play. It's always best to stick to um, what you know the role requires in terms of talent, experience, expertise, um, and refer back to this after each interview. Um, and if needs be, um, wait out um, and look for other candidates that do fit your criteria. Pressure to fill positions. So most businesses do move fast and having open role off, open roles often creates extra work for both the um, hiring manager and also the team. Um, quick decisions uh, rarely work though. The goal is to identify the best candidate for the role in the company and who will stay and contribute the longest, um, not simply just fill an open vacancy. Um, also, on the flip side of that is uh, delaying decisions. So I've seen this error happen in two ways. So sometimes companies feel the need to see more candidates, I guess, as a bit of an insurance policy. Um, even though um, a well-qualified uh, candidate has already been identified. Um, and the second reason is simply just to not make a decision. Thinking about a candidate for a week rarely changes your thoughts about the candidate may cause you to lose out on um, the best candidate. Um, generally high quality candidates move quite quickly in the recruitment market and sitting on a decision um, for, for a week or more will just allow the candidate to begin interviewing or going elsewhere to other companies. Um, likewise, uh, from the candidate who is uh, also interviewing, they could lose interest because um, it, because the company's looking um, indecisive, basically. So now moving on to look at um, types of discrimination during an interview. Um, and there are different types you need to be mindful of, um, both in the interview process, but just as um, part of the recruitment process as a whole. Um, so the first one is the protective characteristics, which are defined within the Equality Act. And I'll cover off um, these in the next slide. So there's positive discrimination. So companies can take positive action to compensate for disadvantages they reasonably, reasonably believe are faced by people who share a particular characteristic within the industry. Um, so just as an, as an example, um, within the IT industry, it would be lawful for companies to encourage women who are underrepresented within the IT industry to apply for roles and provide training to support um, individuals within that role. But the decision on who, who to recruit should be on merit alone. And then um, our unconscious bias. So whether we're aware of it or not, 
we are all biased in different ways and it can be easy for um, the hiring manager to favour candidates based on them having a similar similar background or experience. Um, it's always best practice to have two people involved in the shortlisting process and interviewing process just to help reduce that risk of any personal bias. Um, and again, as a result, um, when recruiting, it's always best practice to have a standard set of questions which apply to every candidate and focus on the skills and the job and what the job requires um, rather than just um, protective characteristics. So just moving on to cover those off quickly. Um, so the Equality Act um, outlines um, nine characteristics that are um, prohibited from being discriminated against. Um, so there's age, this would refer to um, a person of a particular age. So if you've got a job description, a uh, job advert or description out there that refers to somebody who is 18 years old or even a group of people uh, within an age group. So it might be um, if the advert says that people who are aged uh, 35 and over, that would be um, discrimination. There are limited circumstances in which it is lawful to require a job applicant um, to have a particular protective characteristic. So um, a good example um, is if um, an employee is going to be working on a bar and um, selling alcohol, and um, then obviously they need to be over the age um, of 18. So disability, so um, a person is considered disabled if they have a physical or mental impairment, uh, which has a substantial or long term effect on their ability to carry out day to day activities. Gender reassignment, so this protective characteristic applies if a person is wanting to undergo, is undergoing or has even undergone a process to reassign their sex. Marriage and civil partnership, um, pregnancy and maternity, so this refers to when um, a woman is pregnant and also the period after she's given birth. Um, race, so this covers a person's skin colour, nationality, uh, ethnic or national origin. Religious belief, um, so this includes um, religion and any religious beliefs an individual has, um, as well as a lack of any religion. Um, gender, so just refers to whether an individual is male or female. Um, and sexual orientation, so refers to a person's orientation towards people of the same sex, people of the opposite sex, or people of either sex. Um, so just look, looking back at that, I guess um, some behaviours and questions to avoid during the interview process. Um, so asking um, a woman uh, what uh, her plans are to have children or if she is pregnant. Um, asking uh, how someone's religious belief may impact them within the role asking um, about or even if a candidate has a disability, um, showing more empathy for a candidate who has the same racial or social background as you. Um, so if you hired, um, so this again goes back to positive, um, types of positive discrimination. So if you decided to recruit a 50 year old, 58 year old um, because you felt they were too old, um, you would be guilty of discrimination. But you would also be guilty of discrimination if you hide that 58 year old uh, simply simply for the purposes of having someone older on the team. Um, you should be careful. Um, you should carefully plan the interview and questions you're going to ask and ensure that questions cannot be perceived as discriminatory. All applicants um, should be given an equal chance to explain why they are the best person for the job. Um, and you should ask all applicants the same questions for assessing um, key criteria are identified. Um, ultimately, the best way to avoid discrimination is to focus on the candidate's abilities and suitability for the role. Um, I would recommend keeping a record of decisions you've made and why, um, as they can provide evidence um, for others. Um, and all notes where possible should be objective um, based on the candidate's skills and experience. And obviously can also help to give constructive 
feedback to any unsuccessful applicants um, later on down the line. Um, so now just moving on to look at um, interview pre preparation. Um, so before conducting an interview, it is vital that um, the hiring manager has done some prep work to ensure they can get the most out of the process and recruit the right candidate for the role. So firstly, um, ensure there is a job description for the role. You need to know what job it is you're trying to fill um, and determine if someone is competent and motivated to do that role. So it's best to think about what the key competencies for the role and map these out. You can then link questions which relate to the competencies um, or requirements. So for example, if one of the competencies is good customer service, you should be asking the interview questions um, to test their communication and listening skills. You should also decide on the types of interviews you're going to conduct. So there's panel, assessment centres, group, um, role plays, and each do have their own benefit depending on the type of role you're recruiting for. So for an example, um, assessment centres are beneficial um, where there are a series of exercises commonly used by employees to test which skills are not accessible from um, a traditional interview alone. Um, always ensure that there is a structure to the interview. Not only do you want to come across professional and prepared as an organisation, um, there will be a number of questions that you want to ask all candidates to ensure a fair assessment and minimise the impact of any bias. And then also it's all it's always good practice to have a formal rating um, or assessment scale. Generally, this would be um, a scoring matrix based on how detailed the candidate was able to answer a particular question, and then will enable you to convert the answer into some sort of quantitative performance-based assessment. So I've just put up on the screen um, an example for you, which um, goes from naught to four, um, not obviously being that they didn't provide anything, um, through to scoring it a four, they went above and beyond what you would um, expect of somebody within that role. So now moving on to look at some interview question types. As I've mentioned before, as part of the interview process, it is important to ask a number of different questions. So you've got generic questions. Um, these will be, would be set questions which are relevant for um, any interview at any stage and any role, um, irrespective of the level within the organisation. Then you will have some specific questions. So these will be set questions which relate to key competencies and requirements of the role. So just an example, if the job description specifies it specifies um, strong commercial awareness, um, a question could be, what experience have you had in developing um, a budget? Then there's open questions. Um, so these tend to um, allow a candidate to um, demonstrate their skills and knowledge uh, by drawing on experience and examples they can provide. Um, these typically open with things such as tell me about a time when, or give me an example of, Open questions can often lead to further probing questions to enable the candidate to give um, a more detailed response. Um, and then there's closed questions. So these can be useful for controlling and directing the conversation and generally do result in a yes or no response. Um, and then also um, you can obviously ask questions off the back of um, a candidate's comment or previous previous answer, it is always important to listen. Um, so although you will have a crib sheet with a number of questions in front of you, um, the interview is a two-way process um, and a good interview will demonstrate good listening skills and where relevant to the role off the back of the candidate's comment, ask them to tell, tell them more about a particular topic or subject. So a good interview will contain a mixture of all these questions. And as a guide, um, a first stage interview should typically last around 45 to 60 minutes, I'd say. All candidates should be asked the same questions to ensure that assessment of um, performance at interview and suitability for the role is being measured on the same criteria. So now what I want to get into is uh, just a few examples of each of those. 
Um, so just going back to generic questions, these are questions which um, do not focus on specific skills um, or abilities and therefore can be used um, at any stage um, of any interview. Um, so just some examples up on the screen there for you. I'm not going to read them out individually. I'll just um, give you a bit of time to go through them. Um, but as you can see, they are fairly generic and can be used at any point during um, an interview. So generic questions can help you to get to know more about an individual's motivation, both whilst in employment um, and how they like um, to best work and help you understand them um, as a person. So then just moving on to specific questions. Um, so these do need to relate to um, key competencies or measures which have been outlined in the job description for the role. And they're, um, so I've broken this down um, just based on a couple um, of competencies that um, might have been pulled out. Um, so this one is based on decision making. And again, I'll just give you a few minutes to have a read through. Um, and another example, if you uh, recognize that um, customer focus is a key competency and the different types of questions or examples of the types of questions you could ask there. And then also teamwork. Um, so again, if you've recognized that teamwork is one of the core competencies, um, some examples of the types of questions you can ask. So again, you can see that it's looking at the core competencies of a, a job description and then pulling out the best um, questions uh, for that. Um, so traditional interview questions um, are generally orientated around performance duties uh, and responsibilities and are important um, but the, um, it's always good to also ask some behavioural questions as these often help to dig a bit further into an individual's personal commitment um, or emotional intelligence. So just some examples of behavioural questions you can ask during an interview process. Again I'll just give you a few minutes to read through them. And by asking these types of questions, you'll be amazed what you can actually find out um, from a candidate. Um, generally, they help out to flush out um, a deeper and more complex behaviours within a candidate and also um, their thinking patterns, patterns and thought processes. Um, so... During an interview, I would, um, where possible, try to avoid asking questions which start um, with why. Um, although they can be um, absolutely fine in, under the right circumstances, they can come across to the candidate um, as an accusation. So rather than um, saying, why did you do it that way? You could rephrase it to be, what was behind um, that decision? Um, so, in summary, um, be organised, uh, so read through uh, an applicant's CV um, prior to the interview and be aware of the key competencies you're looking for that candidate to demonstrate and do have some prepared questions. Decide on the interview process and the questions which are going to be asked at each stage. Do use a mixture of generic, specific uh, and behavioural questions. And also make sure there's a mixture of open and closed questions. Um, score candidate responses um, to questions to give you a quantitative assessment of each candidate. This will then help uh, provide um, constructive feedback to any unsuccessful applicants. Remember, interviewing is a two-way process, so it's important to demonstrate a professional and fair approach. And always retain interview notes in line with the company's GDPR or data retention policy. 
Um, and that's it for today's session. So thank you for listening and attending. Um, I hope it has been useful. If you did have any questions or need any further support, um, my contact details are up on the screen. So feel free to drop me an email or give me a call. Um, I know I've covered off a couple of um, examples in today's session, but Clover HR can support in providing additional examples of questions which can be asked to interview if you require. So just um, feel free to get in touch. Thank you.